Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater with Run Blog Run, Stuart Weirs in Oxford, England, intellectual capital of the world, of course. And this is your favorite program, Athletics Chant, Athletics Chat, not Chant, Athletics Chat 39. Mike, did I get the right numbers? Good. Okay, he hasn't responded. Normally when he doesn't respond, that means I've got the right numbers. Well, hello, Stuart. How are you this fine feather day? Well, it's snow in part of England, but not my part, so I'm fine. It's still pretty cold. But yeah. hey, isn't it an amazing time for indoor athletics? It is field, even. awesome, my friend. I mean, there's some good stuff, and some of our favorite characters are competing. And mm. um, I would also like you, as we go over the, the Czech indoor gala, Karlsruhe, Dusseldorf, mm. Berlin, Dortmund, mm. and mm. Arkansas, I would also like you to give praise to people who are providing you with photos and quotes because mm. people just think we sit there and paste this and paste that, but there's a lot mm. of work going into it. And over the weekend, you were covering two, at least two meets at a time. Um, yeah. And yeah. I'll tell you, um, I wanted to give you some Twitter numbers just so you know. The weekend of the first um, Arkansas meet, the ATL meet uh, on the 24th, which was pretty much that meet. I think there was a couple meets in Europe. Um, we got 70,000 Twitter impressions the first day. And when we put stuff up the second day, another 50,000. So people wow. were getting into it. This last, the weekend of the 31st, we started on the Friday. We had... Mm. Uh, the meet was it what was the 29th was that uh berlin, was it berlin? No. um uh, that's a week ago um, i think it was know, carl it, made, it was indoor meeting the, the uh yeah i had calls for uh, Düsseldorf. yeah one of those two and then yeah. um so we had big one that one we had stuff on saturday we had stuff on mm -hmm. sunday and then this mm -hmm. last weekend friday saturday sunday it's been crazy so yeah. um where do you want to begin my friend well, let's start with the the Czech indoor gala because they, they were brilliant. They they produced um, photographs. Uh, there was a there was a sort of um, some of some of the events. They also had what they called a virtual mix zone, so you actually could could do it. But you know the thing about that, that the Czech meet it was a two hour elite international program preceded by national events and. Because of what's happened in the last 12 months, what athletes want more than anything is a chance to compete. Yeah. And, and I mean, just, just because I have the numbers, the, the um, Dortmund event uh, on, on Sunday, there were 100 German athletes running, and that was about 30 overseas. So, wow. you know, to give 100 athletes a chance to run, and, you know, most of the, most of the races had a prelim and a final, whether they needed it or not, just to give people a chance to run twice. <laughs> and, I mean, in the Czech Republic, they did, the, uh, they did a 4 by 400 mixed relay, just for a bit of fun. That's and, cool. But, I mean, but you know, in, in the Czech Republic, there were winners from nine countries, there were 25 PRs, uh, and there were three, three national records. So high quality stuff and a great opportunity for athletes from, from around the world. And mm -hmm. I mean, then you move into Germany, where G Germany managed four indoor events in, in about 10 days. Wow. And I mean, at Dusseldorf, they had people like Dina Isher smith Mon, uh, Malika Mahambo, or competing, so fabulous stuff. Um, and what I like about Dortmund is they had 11 events, nine on the track, two field events, six for women, five for men. And before that, they had five events just, just for local athletes. So, um, and they, they did this quite fascinating 2,000 meter steeplechase indoor. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be sorry to know there's no water jump. Oh, but uh, I, I mean, they're just, just it's fun events and serious events. I mean, and Berlin, uh, probably the, the, the highlights were the, the hurdles, the sprint hurdles with um, Orlando Ortego and Christina Clemens winning. So high quality people 
um, in all of these. But uh, I'd say the main thing is it's giving athletes who have been starved of competition opportunities to compete. And you know, well done all those American athletes who've made the effort to get over to Europe for this. Mm -hmm. um, and great, great stuff, great stuff happening. And I mean, um, the, the race that, that really cracked me up was the uh, prelim um, in Dortmund of the women's sprint hurdles. Okay. There were seven athletes in it with eight to qualify for the final. And the rule said that the qualification would be by time, not by place. But work that one out because surely the person who has the fastest time comes first. Yes. Um, and <laughs> it just I felt so sorry for the for the girl who false started because with everyone qualifying she could just have walked up. Yes. And made the oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, now great stuff. And again, and let's let's shout out to the organizers who made these things happen. Um, I mean like in uh, in Karlsruhe in Dortmund, they were saying they only allowed 199 people in the arena at any one time. So, uh, you know, they have to manage that. And, of course, Berlin, uh, as your photographs uh, showed on, on Run, Blog, Run, yeah. uh, they had virtual spectators. I love that. Thank you. That was a lot of fun to see. They, they mm -hmm. did a nice job with it. No, I thought that, you know, the, the your coverage of the Czech indoor, I absolutely loved. And, and my guess is our friend Alphonse Uk is somehow involved because it's in Ostrava, and I think he's the unofficial mayor. Uh, Karlsruhe yes. is a wonderful meet. Uh, Dusseldorf uh, it, it became an Eastoff meet, as did Berlin. Mm. I like the Eastoff people, and I admire them, and the, the pictures they give us are beautiful. I would just like mm. to have more, and they don't mm. seem to be able to play well with World of Athletics or European Athletics, but that's their issue. Dortmund yeah. rocked, and then the mm. Arkansas meet, the American Track League uh, meeting three, was fantastic. Um, mm. it, there, there was great 60s, uh, a battle between mm. uh, Trayvon Bromel and Ronnie Baker, yeah. and Ronnie won. Yeah. Ronnie yes. had been injured for a while, but he and, and mm. Trayvon took it to the wire uh, mm. on the women's uh, 60, our mm -hmm. friend um, uh, Okabari, blessing Okabari. Yes. Statuesque, and you know, this is only her second mm -hmm. meet in 10 years. She goes mm -hmm. out and uh, wins the 60 mm -hmm. and does third in the 200. Uh, Jenna mm -hmm. Prandini in that 200. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. She flew. Mm -hmm. And then uh, our friend uh, Sandy Morris, the girl with all the reptiles. Absolutely. He went yeah. for. So what, what, the, the pole ball was interesting because. On Saturday, um, Holly Bradshaw took the world leader at 45. On yep. Sunday morning, on Salika Sidorova at the Moscow Winter Meeting, mm -hmm. one of the most famous mm -hmm. meet mm -hmm. meets in Russia, mm -hmm. took the lead at 487. At mm -hmm. that meet also, uh, Maria Lazenskina, uh did a high jump in 193. But what was really yeah. fun was Rodion Gatalen's daughter, Mm -hmm. um, Akina went four seven oh. She was second in the pole vault, so that's kind of cool. And yeah. uh, and, and talking ahead. about talking about offspring, what about um, Shanti Jackson, seven twenty four, son of Prashan? Wow, that and was so 15. cool. That he's is fifteen. Yep, and I remember Prashan telling us a couple years ago his kids mm -hmm. were pretty darn good. Um, yeah, he told me that. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then um, yeah. the other thing at our lovely meet was, uh, again, so Sandy Morris, at the end of the Sunday night, 488. She And on her third mm -hmm. jump, she looked yeah. great. She's using her longer yeah. poles. She's challenging mm -hmm. herself, and that's awesome. And then our friend mm -hmm. uh, Maurice Dendy, 821 in the long jump yeah. there, too, world leader. But I'll yeah. tell you, the one that, that just tugged at my heart was the men's mile. Uh, Nick Willis was second yes. in there. 356.8, but the kid yeah. he's training with, who was a 421 miler, Hobbs Kessler, and we will hear about this kid again, crosses the line third in 357.7. And what 
Well, what uh, Ronnie Warhurst, the coach at Michigan, uh, and Nick's coach, and Nick had been telling Hobbs is to just listen and run. And the kid was mm. just like, he was so much fun to watch being interviewed. Mm-hmm. Wow, mm. that was such a kick. And uh, yeah. really, really enjoyed that meet. But yeah. it was really nice to see. Uh, I got a nice interview with uh, Nick Willis on uh, Saturday. And yeah. uh, it's uh, mm. it was really, he's just in a good place. You know, he's being coached by his wife, Sierra, and by mm. uh, coach, mm. by Ronnie. And, you know, mm. I think he is the uh, PR director for Ron Warhurst. Ron doesn't mm-hmm. really need one in that Ron is one of the most underrated coaches mm-hmm. in American coaching. Mm-hmm. I, I put him up there with mm-hmm. Bill Bowerman and Jerry Schumacher in terms of great distance coaches. Um, at one time he had mm-hmm. uh, Nick and Nate and the Kevin Sullivan, a whole crowd of, of great 1500 milers. He gets it. So parents, if you want your kid to get up, not only get a great education, but learn how to run the mile in 1500. Talk to Ronnie Warhurst, okay? Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, uh, talking about good. Nick, talking about Nick, isn't it the case that he has run a four-minute mile for each of the last 15 years or something ridiculous? 19 years now. He, 19 uh, years at the Orange, what was it at the Orange Winter Classic down in mm. uh, in Florida? Uh, a couple mm. weeks ago, he ran uh, in January, January 19th or 20th. Mm. He ran. A 350.8. He told a 358. He told us that he wasn't even trying to win that one, and, and he kind of said, "You know, I probably should have put a little more effort into it." He looked great yesterday running the 356. I think he's in 352 shape, you know, given the right stuff. But you know what? Whatever's going for him is working. I teased him to ask him if he was going to run a 10,000, and he he answered if it didn't answer. You know, he he wants he really likes what he's doing. And whatever he's doing at the age of 36 is working. I think he's at Mm. about 100 sub four minute miles. And when Mm. he got his 19th year going sub four, he eclipsed the man he was tied with, was Sir John Walker, the 1976 Olympic gold Mm. medalist Mm. at the 1500, Mm. who said the greatest line about competitors in history in Runner's World before Montreal in 1976. He was quoted as saying when they said, what kind of a, a group of people do you want competing against you in Montreal? And he said, we a whole field of senior citizens. And it was just it made me crack up because, you know, uh, John had probably one of the toughest finals in Olympic history with the people he was going against, uh, uh, you know, and it, it just was Eamon Coughlin among them. I think it was uh, Vesefeld, Paul Heinz Wellman. Yeah, just some some tough, tough guys. So uh, mm. it's nice to see Nick uh, continuing to go. And he seems happy and he's enjoying it, you know. Mm. Uh, speaking about happy and enjoying, let's talk about those um, those one uh, discipline events, the Slovak high yeah. jump and run pole vault. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the one in, in the Slovak, which certainly our friend Alphonse was uh, at, at the center of. Yeah. And, I mean, so you sort of had about, uh, there were 13 men and approximately the same number of women high jumping, just a uh, man, woman, man, woman. And, uh, but, I mean, I was initially a little bit, suspicious of whether that would hold the interest just to have the one discipline. Yeah. And of course, with, with, with jumping, sometimes you have an awful lot of waiting around. But, you know, this was, the, clearly they had relaxed the the normal rules as to how long you could have between jumps. Because normally, as soon as one person was uh, on the runway, the next person was, was in line. Yeah. And so it was very fast moving um, to watch. And it certainly did no harm at all to the competition that uh, Yaroslava um, Uska, uh, if only she had a better pronounceable name, a more pronounceable name. Oh my name, gosh. Yes. Jumped 201, 203, and then 206. Yeah. 
it's mind boggling. And, and uh, later in the week, Kaja Burquist, who is the world indoor record uh, mm -hmm. from Sweden, she's a, a TV announcer up there and, and uh, an entrepreneur. And I, I got to speak to her a few times, but she said to EME News that she sees Yaroslava as the person who's going to take her record up. And uh, which yeah. is interesting. And, and, you know, what I want to see is I want to see uh, mm -hmm. um, Ms. Lazenskena and uh, Yaroslava. Yeah. <clears throat> I want, I want that meet, you know, that's going to be if, a killer. But if, if Yaroslava is doing two or six in February, you know, what would she be doing? Oh yeah. When she's, when she's fully fit in, uh, in summer form. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, then we had the uh, the, the Rouen, uh, La Perche, with male and female four working together. Um, the only disappointment with that is that um, uh, uh, the Greek lady whose name is just, just escaped. Oh, Katerina Stefanidi. Katerina Stefanidi had some kind of problem and had to withdraw. Oh, but uh, that, that's the one where, as you say, um, uh, Holly uh, Bradshaw won it yeah. with yeah. 470 and carried on to 485. And um, her coach, Scott Simpson, was filming it. But um, he got so excited. And uh, actually, Katie Najot tweeted, the highlight of the meet for me was that Scott got so excited that he dropped the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's just... um, but it's funny enough on, on that little series that we're doing in on 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 the blog. Um, th th there's a lovely quote from Scott uh, and Holly about how frustrated they are that her p her PR is from 2012. Yeah, she's never managed um, to equal it, and she's now come within two centi uh, centimeters, and she actually stopped after 485. I think probably sensibly feeling, look, um, it's been quite an effort um, to keep going because of she was on her own for the last two or three jumps, and yet there was not a lot of waiting time between them. And that she just felt that really early in the season is best not really to push it. But um, it'd be interesting to know whether she could actually have got a new PR if she'd gone on. But the confidence that she takes uh, from this um, is, is, is great. And uh, again, some, some chap called um, Mondo, I think his name is, mm -hmm. did yet another six meters to win the uh, to win the men's. So uh, you know, what is what is going on with the, what 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 are they putting in the water for these four bottles that they're all jumping such high? I mean, like you've got Mondo, who's done two six meters already in February. Yeah, uh, Lavillani's done one. Sam Kendrick is not far off. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think Sam's dealing. Game. Sam may be dealing yeah. with jet lag, you know, and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll we'll see how he does in the next couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, yeah. it's been it's been fantastic to watch. We posted both the six oh three, and then uh, uh, Renault did another five ninety jump, and he was second. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's fascinating to me just to see how mm -hmm. well these these guys are jumping. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that one of the things that tells us is that people actually trained over the pandemic, which is yeah. really good to see. Yeah. And, um, the mm -hmm. pole vault, three mm -hmm. world leads in less than 12 hours in the women's pole vault was fantastic. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then now we're already up to 6.03. Uh, mm -hmm. Where's it going to go? You know, I mean, we, we could see a meet. Uh, in the mm -hmm. next few weeks with three men over six meters. And yeah. that could yeah. be, and, mm -hmm. you know, three women over, gosh, what, uh, four, mm -hmm. 490. I mean, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's uh, Sidorova's ready. Uh, yeah. I think that uh, Sandy is too. And I think that yeah. Holly Bradshaw is capable of 495 of anything. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I just think that she is mm -hmm. totally underrated mm -hmm. and that... Yeah. Um, you can see in the physicality of her jumping, you can mm -hmm. see in the confidence in the photos, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can see in just her conversations on the, the yeah. webinars that you have posted yeah. that, yeah. um, 
British fans have got something to really look at because she is, she's a player, you know, um, she gets I, it and she's had it for I a while. So many, like so many people in our sport, she is one of the nicest people you will ever meet. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's true. I mean, I it's, mean when I did the last interview with her, uh, she said to me, uh, you have my number. Just give me a call anytime if you want anything more. Yeah. No, no, I'm the British champion. Don't bother me or anything like that. Just I thought that was that was that was really really impressive. Um, and yeah, it's 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 you know just going back to you saying that people have been training. Now I spoke to Dina Isher Smith uh, in in the in the Düsseldorf, uh -huh. uh, and I asked her why didn't she compete at all last year. And she said, well, we sat down. Uh, I sat down with my team, Coach John Blackie and whoever else uh, was there, and said, um, the priority is Tokyo. How do I get to Tokyo in the best shape? Yeah. And we decided that competition last year was going to be a bit hit and miss. So why don't I take the time to work on the things that in a normal year I wouldn't have time to work on yeah. and be in the best shape possible at the end of the year and then ready to attack 2021. And as she's planning to go to the European uh, indoors, which she hasn't done for several years, she's after the British record. Unfortunately, she's pulled out of Lievin this week because of a, a tight hamstring or a tight quad. Okay. Um, but again, I just think that's a sensible move. And yeah. uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see how uh, how she compares, perhaps with, with some of the ones who, who ran a lot more last year, perhaps didn't train as much. So, uh, yeah. um, fascinating. Yeah, no, I, I think that uh, we have been blessed with a wonderful indoor season so far. Um, I've only heard about one athlete, and I still don't have the athlete's name, who's tested positive for COVID, and that was at meeting two at the American Track League, and that's been it so far. Um, and we're very lucky with that, and we want to keep our luck, but it's because the officials are diligent, the meet management's diligent, mm -hmm. the athletes yeah. aren't taking any chances. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know it's got to be hard for the athletes because – how many times, Stuart, have you and I sat in a lobby having tea and watching everybody hug each other and mm. back slap mm. each other yeah. and yeah. John yeah. Regis laughing and, and the mm. whole crew, mm. you know, mm. and, and it's it's the stuff we miss. But we all mm. we know that it'll be back, but it's just uh, everybody's yeah. got to be careful, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I must say, I'm, I'm not at liberty to mention him, but I know several athletes have recovered. All right. Yeah, I, I forgot about what Sandy Morris has told me about it. She went on TV mm. and talked about it. Mm. And now the one uh, a couple weeks ago, I interviewed Katie Najat, who had it mm -hmm. in beginning of December. Yeah. And she told me yeah. it took her about five weeks to feel human again, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I, yeah. I just, and, and I, I pray and hope that, that our, our athlete friends stay uh, safe. That's the yeah. important thing. Um, let's talk about Lolo Jones. The, are, you, are you talking about the world champion in the two-man two man bobsleigh? Awesome. This weekend. And uh, it's fascinating because one of the people she was competing against is Montel Douglas, who was the British record holder oh for uh, Dean Isher Smith. And uh, she's now moved into bobsleigh. And, of course, we can think of Lauren Williams. Um Olympic medalist yes. in, in winter and summer. And 2005 uh, gold in the 100, yeah. Indeed, Mont yeah. Montel I interviewed for BBC in yeah. London 2012 when um, at the after the closing ceremony. She was delightful. Mm -hmm. and, she was uh, a delightful girl. Yeah. But, but Lolo is a lot of fun. You know, we've seen her come win World Indoors and come so, mm -hmm. so close to a gold at a World Outdoors. Um and uh, I remember talking, I think it was two years ago. She still loves track and field, but boy, the bobsled, that's cranking. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, and then we've got 
Great Britain selection for European indoors. So no trials, um, but discretionary yeah. selection. So tell us about yeah, that. Well, there's going to be, they, they decided that they had to cancel the British Championship because they, they weren't convinced they could do it safely. And the fact that it's in Scotland probably is a factor because Scotland at the moment is even stricter than England okay. in terms of the lockdown. And they just felt it wasn't right to be bringing people from all over the country uh, to an indoor venue. So what they've now said that they're going to do three um, events, qualifying, not I suppose qualification events in the sense to help people to get the qualifying time for the world, for the European indoors. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be in different locations in England. One is in Loughborough, one is in Manchester, and I can't remember where the third one is. But um, the, they have said that these are not trials in the sense that the first, uh, first past the post uh, is not automatically selection, it's all discretionary, which means that, for example, someone like Dean Isher Smith, who has run 710, is virtually guaranteed to get a place without having to, to, to do uh, anything more. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I know that, that US and the UK have a different view on this because our Olympic selection World Championship selection always includes one discretionary place. Yeah. Um, and which is controversial because, I mean, like, like last year for the uh, 1500 meters for Doha, um, so to speak, uh, the, wrong, <laughs> the wrong two people, if I could put it like that, came first and second. And Charlie Deval Grice and Jake Whiteman didn't. Yeah. So the selectors in the end had to take the first two. Both of whom reached the final, a Kerr and Gourley. So yeah. well done them. Um, but it was a straight choice between uh, Wakeman and Grice. Grice had the fastest individual time. Wakeman perhaps more consistent over the year, and they went for Wakeman. And, and yeah. he was the best of the three in, in that final. So we're used to that. But um, it does also mean that you can have appeals. People will appeal and make their case and say, well, why have you picked him instead of me when I've done this and this and this? So it's just messy in that sense. Yeah. But, but this year, uh, it's also hard. I mean, I know that um, uh, Abi Zuru, who's really keen uh, to go to the Europeans, has not managed to compete yet. Because yeah. There have not been any meets that, that she's been able to get to. Um, and so, so that, that's hard because it's sort of, it's not a level playing field, as we say. If some people are able to compete more, more, more than others, according to where they live and uh, whether they're able to travel and, and so on. So it's 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 a complicated and it's messy. And um, uh, but I think we just have to make the best of a difficult year. And over here, the um, there was rumor that that they were going to let some media into uh, a couple upcoming meets where they did a three-day quarantine and they'd be watching them, but I don't really believe that's going to happen. I was hoping mm. to go to the New Balance Indoor, but uh, mm. I will miss that for this, just the second time in, mm -hmm. in 26 mm. years. But uh, the, uh, the American Track League had very few people at them. Um, mm. You know, we don't have a U.S. champs this year, and I interviewed... Uh, uh, Max Siegel on Friday. We'll be posting that in the next week or two. Um, and Max said, you know, you've got to put the health of the athletes and the officials in, at the forefront. And yeah. that's yeah. what uh, yeah. he says. They yeah. do have the ability to make mm -hmm. changes at the yeah. last minute, but it's still tough, you know. And yeah. and as we've discussed before, uh, Joe Coates has said that the CEO of British Athletics that she needed fans in the places to pay the bills. And that's yeah. th that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. It's it's just a yeah. challenge right now. And, and uh, some of the yeah. small European countries are getting hit too. I mean, I know uh, our friends uh, who work down in Monaco, uh, if they're mm -hmm. living over in the French border, 
they're still out only a couple, two kilometers, I think, from their house each day. They can go out for an hour, but they've got to stay yeah. close. Yeah. And they, they well, have to have a card, don't, a written note all the time, right? Well, uh, yeah, it's something like that because I know I know that Holly Holly Bradshaw um, went to France to compete in two in two events and wasn't allowed to compete in the first one because she she was required to, to quarantine for a week. So so this, it's it's so so she stayed on didn't do her much harm when she did a four eighty five. But yeah. interestingly, of all the indoor one events I have watched this year, the Czech one. Uh -huh. Seemed to have a lot of spectators, and none of the others did. Wow! How we is Germany had no spectators? How is COVID in uh, the Czech Republic right now? Well, um, the the very efficient uh, press officer uh, Michael mm -hmm. told me that he thought his numbers were actually worse than in Britain, given that uh, what a small oh. a small country they are. Yeah. And yeah. If you do it Kurata. Wow. But they were still able to do it and, and have house spectators. Were they wearing masks? I couldn't see. Okay, okay. I was just curious. Yeah, I know they. There was. Yes, sir, uh, I, 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 I saw a picture over here from a, a, a group of kids on the same college track team watching. They couldn't be in the mm. stadium, so they watched uh, from the streaming. Their buddy running the school record for the five thousand, and I thought, isn't that great? But half of them weren't wearing masks, and yeah. you know, I I just I, I don't want to reprimand people, but I'm just pleased telling people, stay smart, stay aware, stay safe. This is not the time to yeah. let it down. You know, I mean, we're yeah. we're just getting to a place. Uh, I mean, President Biden has spent you know his first uh, <laughs> first eighteen days. And he's going to be mm. spending probably the first six months and just cleaning up messes. And, uh, mm. you know, with such a big country, a lot of places haven't got the vaccine they're supposed to. You know, I'm mm. 62 and I'm in a high risk group, you know, because of, mm. you know, being male and senile. Um, but uh, that uh, but I'm, you know, it's just right now adult, adults over the age of 65 and those with. Uh, condition so it's just mm. this is just for the first shot so it's yeah. going to be a while i mean i was i was trying to figure well how do i get to tow room poland mm. do i go over mm. in quarantine for 14 days uh mm. and yeah. i just and as much as i like tow room and i know the best kebab shop Stuart, i'm telling you mm -hmm. this kid mm. is from alexandria egypt and he stays mm. open till 3 a.m and for five euros i mm. got the best falafel sandwich I've had outside right. of uh, of the old town in Paris, um, but yeah, I, I got to figure out how to get over there, and I don't think the poles would even let me off the plane, you know. Yeah, and no, uh, no I, I won't be uh, I, I won't be going sadly. But um, yeah, are you thinking Doha? Yeah. Are you thinking Diamond League? If you get your shots, I am. Okay. I am. That's the, that's where I'm. Well. <laughs> I'm definitely not traveling before Easter, but but after Easter, assuming it still takes place, yeah. I'm thinking World Relays and Doha as possible places to go. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm now I've, I've had I've had my vaccine now for three weeks, and okay. it's supposed to kick in after three weeks, and uh, I celebrate it by going going out and buying croissant on Saturday. Awesome, which, awesome. Yeah, Did you have any side been, effects? How have you felt? Do you any side effects or anything? No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, um, ironically, um, I think our government has mismanaged most of the COVID, but they've actually managed the uh, the vaccination program well. Good. You know, good. They set themselves a target of 15 million yeah. by the middle by the end of next week, and they're on target. Mm -hmm. That's the 70 plus and the health vulnerable. And then the next target is the 50 plus by April. But then by then, of course, you've got to do the second dose. Yeah. Or for those who've had the first dose. You were, let's go back to the German meets for a minute. I got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. I thought the German meets were allowing 200 fans in, but it's not 200 fans. It's no, 199 people in the stadium, people. right? 
Yeah, I mean, I presume that the, the uh, uh, presume that the that the law must say that you you can only have two hundred, and they will interpret the you know, yeah. German way of saying we'll have one ninety nine. <laughs> but no, it was because because I mean, I I heard certainly in some of the meets they were allowing field coaches but not track coaches into the wow into the venue. wow simply That's... because they couldn't they, there were too many runners. Yeah. Uh, that that they couldn't allow coaches for all of them. So what meets do we have this week that we're looking forward to? I know we've got the New Balance Indoor on Sunday, uh, on Saturday the 13th, correct? Uh, Lieva is uh, uh, Tuesday of this week. And that oh, last year had the highest score. Yeah, I remember in that. In terms of, of quality. And I mean, um, yeah, I mean, they, they've got... Uh, they've got some fantastic athletes. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of Scottish middle distance runners. Not sure if they're any good. Some Laura Muir and Gemma oh, Ricci or something. I've like heard that. of them. Yeah, they're they're rather obscure, yeah. but uh, yeah. 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 So uh, no, it's, I'm really looking forward to that. Sadly, um, I'm I'm doing it from home rather than yeah. than being there because I loved being there last year. Um, and they, I'm, interestingly. Uh-huh. Interestingly, they ha- are allowing ten media people. Only ten. Wow. Wow. Uh, let's talk about watching track meets over in the UK. Are you watching them all on BBC, or are you watching like a cable network? Um, the um, what is it? The A category ones are on BBC. Okay. Um, like uh, Lieva and uh, the I think the Düsseldorf one. Um, the others I am watching on YouTube or whatever is offering them. And oh, I have to send you I have to send you an invoice because I, I had to pay five dollars to watch Dortmund. I will take care of that. I think I can handle that. Wow. Now, which one was uh, charging you, know, I, you for photos, Stuart? Uh, that was Dortmund. But, I mean, basically, they were simply saying, we're not doing photographs, but the official photographer is so-and-so. And you go on his site, and, and they're, they're all uh, uh, having the paper. I mean, this is a tricky business, and I yeah. sympathize, because yeah. um, you know how it, when we go to um, big events, there are all these free Getty pictures. And then yeah. photograph, photographers like Mark Shearman say, how am I me- meant to make a living? Yep, it's no, no. I mean, I remember... Away pictures. Victor Saylor said the same thing. He would get furious. You know, we, we right now we pay Kevin Morris in the U.S. Mm. and then also um, Image of Sport. You know, um, mm. we work with them and, and a few others as well. And this new mm. a woman photographer, Courtney White. But it's been a challenge. Mm. And Mark's helped us on things, too. But they've got to yeah. be able to make a living. And I, yeah. I salute yeah. uh, um, I salute World Athletics for providing photos. I wish they would yeah. work with a little more of the iconic photographers. Mm. But I, mm. I, I think that their program, and I remember getting into one with Chris Turner about this, and, and I, I know mm. Chris's heart's in the right place. He's now in mm. char- charge of Heritage. But those are just some mm. of the, those are some of the things mm. that I think that if we had a, mm. um, a media – uh, advisory board with World Athletics, hint, hint, um, there possibly could be some people who mm-hmm. could shed a light for yeah. Jackie Abrock Doyle and a few others on yeah. Um, yeah. Just how we could fine-tune some things. And, 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 mm-hmm. and I'm not really mm-hmm. complaining. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. let's make it better. Um, yeah. And yeah. Because, th- as you know, in this day and age, trying to do the media, there's not many of us anymore how many, mm. I, most of the time, I'm the only American in events, and, you know, you're the only guy I misidentified as a Scotsman for a long time, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, how many years did I do that, first three years? Oh, because I don't know. I told you Scottish, you were so nice to me that, you know, you you, you didn't want to tell me or, or rain down, you know, turn, me turning into a pillar of salt or anything like that. You know? I'm one of those people who says, you know, I don't care what you call me as long as you call me for my dinner. Okay, you know, and Stuart, with that, we're at 39 minutes, my friend, on Athletics right. Chat 39. You have survived. Um, thank you again, as always, okay. for your thoughtful bomos and uh, putting up with my conversation and faux pas. Um, 
you know, I am an American, and that happens sometimes. But yeah. uh, this is Athletics Chat 39. This is Larry Eater in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, the Chiefs capital of the world. We're with Stuart Weir in Oxford, England, the intellectual capital of the world. Add cheese, add intellectual stuff, and then maybe a bottle of French wine. We've got it all settled. Stuart, thank you. Have a lovely, lovely one. Hey, sports fans. It's Larry Eater. Run, blog, run. And not run, dog, run, is our friend Mark Wetmore likes to say. But run, blog, run. And it's athletics chat number 39. You know the drill. Larry Eater is ensconced in his lovely little house in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, the cheese capital of the world. And Stuart Weir is ensconced in his lovely domicile in Oxford, England, the intellectual capital of the world. And for 40 minutes once a week, we attempt, attempt to answer all the problems and the needs, the questions that just dog global athletics. Sometimes we're successful. Sometimes we're more successful than other times. Let's just put it that way. But I can guarantee you we have a good time chatting, and we actually listen to each other most of the time. Uh, my friend Jeff Shaver had said that, you know, every once in a while I need to take a breath and let people, other people talk. So I'm trying to do that, Jeff. Thank you. So we had, uh, we had a plethora of uh, track meets. Um, over the last week, we've had the Czech Indoor Gala. We've had the Indoor Meeting Karlsruhe. We've had the East Off Dusseldorf. We've had the East Off Berlin. We've had the Dortmund meeting, Und Dortmund, and we've had the American Track League meeting three. Where do I begin? Check indoor gale in Ostrava. Uh, I still have not been to an event in Ostrava, and my friend Alphonse Yuk, who is the unofficial mayor of Ostrava, has offered me uh, a place to stay, and I've got to take him up on that hospitality. I wanted to go to the Czech Republic. My family's from there, and... Um, I want to see some real track meets. They have stuff outdoors and they have stuff indoors. The indoor was not only awesome, but they provided the best pictures of the week and their pictures kicked butt in great performances from athletes all over central Europa. Uh, Karlsruhe indoor meeting, some good stuff there too. Uh, it was part, it is part of the world indoor tour for 2021. Then there was, uh, and, and there was some, Good jumping there, some very good competition, some very fast um, hurdling. Um, and then there was East Off Dusseldorf. Um, there were, including semis, a 10, uh, 10 to 11 events there. Um, and there was um, East Off Berlin. Uh, East Off Dusseldorf was, uh, I think, middle of last week. East Off Berlin was on Friday. Then there was the Dortmund meeting on Sunday, Arkansas on uh, Sunday as well. Uh, from all these amazing things, we've got a 2.206 uh, um, European leader and world leader by 19-year-old Yaroslava Mihushinik. I destroy her name every time I say it, but she is an incredible talent in Kajsha Bergfist, the European record holder and world indoor record holder in the women's high jump says that Yaroslav will be the one who will break her record. Um, she did that at a, uh, what was called the Slovak uh, high jump event, uh, one of three high jump only events put on by Alphonse Juk in Central Europa, uh, which, yes, we have to go to all three of them. Um, and also on Saturday was the Rouen pole vault on the women's side um, Holly Bradshaw went 485 all by her lonesome. Uh, she won at 470. Katerina Stefaniti had to withdraw. She had some uh, uh, malady or, or uh, um, some type of issue. We just want to see her healthy and being able to compete again. So on Saturday night, um, Holly Bradshaw was the world leader at 45. Sunday morning at the Russian winter meeting in Moscow, one of the most iconic indoor meets in all of Russia. Um, Anzalika Sidorova, um, most, uh, most recently a world champion, um, went 487, um, to take the world lead by two centimeters that night at the American track lead meeting, 
um, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Sandy Morris on her third attempt at 488, cleared it, took the world lead, three world leads, 12 hours. Pretty cool, huh? Um, and what are these single event meets? Uh, Stewart said he was kind of worried that it would keep people's attention, but they do. They do. And uh, our friend Ronaldo Villanay went over 590. Uh, only issue was in most meets that would win, but this was in most meets. Rouen was one of the Persia meets, and um, our friend Mondo Duplantis went 603, upped Renault's 602, and went to 603. So I think we're going to see both of these guys over six in one event. In fact, I think we're going to see Renault, I think we're going to see Mondo and Sam over six meters um in one meet uh this indoor season um lolo jones over the weekend lolo jones who is a double world indoor champion at the 60 meter hurdles he came oh, oh so close to winning uh i believe it was in berlin at the the 100 meter hurdles um he is now a world champion in the two person bob sled um sprinters and hurdlers and bob sleds have gone together for a while, the East Germans started it, and then the U.S. started picking it up, and athletes like Willie Davenport and Rod Milburn really got into it. And uh, Lauren Williams, uh, the 2005 world champion at the 100 meters, she got into it too. Uh, but Lolo has been doing it for a while, and uh, sometimes they're better than others, but uh, this was one of the good ones. Um, she did well, and she won and we're very happy for her. Lola's a lot of fun. We'll see if she comes back to track. Um, Great Britain selection for European indoors. No trials, events, but discretionary selection. That's going to be kind of interesting. We'll have to remain judgment. The pole vault's going through the roof. Yes, it is. You've got Holly Bradshaw. You've got Sandy Morris. You've got Megan Clark. You've got Anzalika Sidorova. You've also got uh, uh, Anika uh, Gatalin, Rodia and Gatalin's uh, daughter went 470 among others uh katie najat who we even talked about and european olympic world champion uh katarina stefaniti women's pole vault is totally hot on the men's side it's piotr lysik it's sam kendricks it's mondo duplant it's cerno la villanay it's uh valentin la villanay uh and it's several of the young american jumpers as well who are coming up and looking good uh both Pole vaults are fantastic and are great for the sport. They're great ways to see, use as a barometer to see how our sport sport is communicating with the younger generation. And right now we think they're doing a great job. So this is Larry Eater with athletics chat number 39. Yes, 39 weeks of all this craziness. And we're not doing a drinking. We're not doing it on any type of, um, you know, or narcotics or anything like that. It's all about the love of global athletics, baby. Okay. Um, Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Athletics Chat number 39. If you like us, subscribe to YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. If you love us, subscribe to, or subscribe to YouTube. Like us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Excuse me. And then if you love us, subscribe on YouTube. We have 369 videos and audios from 2020. We have 2,500 videos, including those from 2020, for the last 10 years, uh, both on SoundCloud, also uh, video work by Zoom. Um, take a look, see what you think, um, trade them, talk to us, send us notes, advise us, all those kind of things. We're having fun. We hope you have fun. Larry Eater, stay safe. Signing off. Thanks to Mike Deering, who produces everything.